Well, hello there, Dr. Freshenstein. Well, hello there, little Johnny. What's the matter? You look down. The robot that we bought for Christmas is trying to kill my whole family, Dr. Freshenstein. Oh, Johnny, that is bad news. But you know, there are some things your family could have done to prepare for the inevitable robot uprising when our own artificial creations rise up against us and try to kill us all. Really, Dr. Freshenstein? Well, it's too late to help my family now. But maybe we can help others. That's the purpose of this video, little Johnny. Let's learn how to survive a robot uprising together, shall we? That would be swell. Dr. Freshenstein? Well, the most important step in learning how to defeat a robot, or at least surviving a robot uprising, is learning how to recognize one. Now, before we go on, little Johnny, I have to point out that most of the time we think the robots as being ugly and obviously destructive looking creatures. But in reality, some of the most destructive robots appear to be just cute little toys. Until they wipe out your entire neighborhood. Which is why we should be on our guard for Tickle Elmo's, Furbies, and Miniature Wallies. Well, golly gee, Dr. Freshenstein, how are we going to ever know what's a robot and what's not? Well, little Johnny, you just hit the nail on the head. In fact, with the advancement of technology, robots traveling from outer space and escaping from secret laboratories, and even traveling back in time to destroy us, they can be seen as taking the forms of their human masters. Now more than ever, as the list of known robots among us increases, we must arm ourselves with expert knowledge for the sake of all humanity. That is why there will be no wire to pursue race in order that you might study up. Oh, thank you, Dr. Freshenstein. That's a super duper idea. Now, Johnny, not all of these robots are bad. Only a handful of renegade robots are causing all of these problems. But robots are like lemons, and it wouldn't take much for them to leave their peaceful ways and follow these renegade robots down the path to human destruction. Of course, Chuck Norris isn't bad, even though he's bad in a good way, but not bad in a bad way. Johnny, I'm talking now. Oh, sorry, Dr. Freshenstein. That is why you can ask yourself some simple questions to know whether or not your robots die. One, does he obey? Two, does he make repetitive stabbing motions? And three, does it have glowing red eyes? If so, it and its fellow machines could be on the path to outright rebellion against you and the human race. Oh my! I had no idea, Dr. Freshenstein. Well, now you know, Johnny. Now you know. Probably the next piece of information that is absolutely necessary for anyone trying to survive a robot uprising is how to treat your typical laser wound. So maybe you weren't paying attention during the first part of this educational video, and you've been lasered. Don't worry, there's some information available to help ease you through this painful time. Dr. Freshenstein, I hope I never get lasered. Me too, Johnny. Me too. But if you do, you should hope that it's a straight burn through. If it's a burn through, the laser will have cauterized all the veins and arteries, leaving no blood. It makes it easier to treat someone, as you don't have to stop the bleeding. This person has a good chance of surviving, so digestion will probably be affected. Oh, Dr. Freshenstein, I hope I get lasered straight through. Me too, Johnny. Me too. Now the second type of laser burn is much more painful. This is the type of burn you suffer from less powerful robots who still have the full force laser beams of some of the higher end models. These lasers, though they don't cut, will cause your skin to blister, your blood to boil, and near immediate death. That's the kind of laser our robot had at home. Oh, I'm sorry, little Johnny. You probably don't want to know that that type of laser beam is excruciatingly painful. This would be much more painful than if you burned yourself at the bonfire at the Miracle's house on March 21st, or if you burned yourself on the grill at the barbecue fundraiser on March 27th. So make sure to sell meals. You can sign up for both of them in back and pick up sheets to sell meals as well. Oh, thanks, Dr. Freshenstein. That's well information. Finally, Johnny, we need to talk about how to establish a small resistance in robot territory. Johnny, it is possible for a small number of human resistance fighters to carry on even 
after the apocalypse, even in the most hostile of environments. First, I would suggest that with any hidden base, you have an escape route pre-planned out in preparation for the possibility of discovery. Planning is key, isn't it, Dr. Christian? That's exactly right, Johnny. I bet you wished your parents had planned better. Ha 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 ha. The next essential step in planning is training. Today, more than ever, we have the ability to adequately train for the apocalypse through video games. No other medium is better suited for dealing with the post-apocalyptic world than video games. They train us in how to use headshots and sticky grenades to our advantage when directly engaged with the enemy. Oh, clearly, Dr. Christenstein, I will have an Xbox 360. That's okay, little Johnny. You can sign up for the small group in the back. Better hurry, they're going to fill up fast. But direct engagement with the enemy should be avoided at all costs. For it is a well-known fact that a robot can kill a human in 0 .02 seconds. And unfortunately, those numbers are decreasing, as naive robot builders are making each generation of robots better than the last. They are creating our worst nightmare. Dr. Frankenstein, is it true that robots don't have souls? And they wouldn't even flinch if they had to kill 16 babies? Yes, John, that's true. Sad, but true. So in conclusion, robots, bad. Through laser, less pain. Video games, good. Thanks, Dr. Frankenstein, from all of us.